Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Sunday afternoon here in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's 5 o'clock local time, 108 degrees outside, and it's time to turn it up a notch. SFL football at Silver State Stadium. The Portland Fleet are in town to take on the Las Vegas Fury. I'm Andy Hamilton along with Ramos Lynn in the booth with me tonight. Ramos, what are you looking forward to in this matchup? Well, this is Portland Fleet's first actual road game in their history. They have a very young football team with a lot of rookies and first, second year men. So last week they looked much improved against the Denver Nightwings. And, uh, you know, I think they will carry with that momentum and they will have a good battle against the Fury today. David and KT Harrell are in the booth running stats for us. Cameron Irvine producing on the ones and twos. And we have a wonderful game for you tonight. If you're new to the league, Portland is wearing white with the orange trim. Las Vegas wearing black with trim of yellow and pink. And we are just about set to get this one going. Two veteran quarterbacks tonight. Matt South, third season in the league after a short hiatus returns. And Tom Rahman, his fifth season in the simulation football league. It's week three action between the Fury, who are 1-1, one and one, and the Fleet coming in at 0-2. Ramos, they looked a lot better, though, last week. They did, especially on defense. Uh, you know, Sioux Falls uh, put about 37 points on them in Week 1, but then for Week 2, they looked uh, so much more improved. Actually, they had a couple of pick sixes in that game, and uh, they will start on offense trying to get a strong start here on the road. Kick is underway. The fleet will get the ball to start this one off. Return coming out from the goal line. Angled out across the 21. Return man Art Vandelay will bring it up to the 22. And that is where we will see this fleet offense manage to score 23 points last week in a loss to Denver, only losing by a single point. Quarterback Matt South, one touchdown and one interception in that game. There is a look at Mr. South, number 10. John Trusman in the backfield, along with the fullback, Jacob Farmer. We'll get to the full rosters here in a moment. Here is the give on first down to Trusman, and he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing there. Day Drury on the tackle. Yeah, John Trusman, the former Las Vegas Fury player, he was a fullback on this football team last season. Uh, so he has had a rocky start in his first two games, but trying to uh, have a good game against his former team. 2.6 yards per carry last week for Trusman. Could not find the end zone. We'll see if he does so in his return to Vegas. Right up the gut again to Trusman. He gets three this time. They are looking to feed that man to start this game off. Yeah, and you know Portland, I think, will try to run the ball here against this Vegas defense. They have a tackle, Scooter Smith. He's a free, uh, well, he was a free agent uh, signing as well as Nelson Lozano, the blocking tight end, number 84. Empty here on third and seven. Got a throw. South will take a seven-step drop. Blitz coming. Unloads far side. Caught, but out of bounds. They are going to say didn't get the feet down. He was looking for Art Vandelay. If he would have been inbounds, it would have been beautifully scripted, but instead it's a three and out. Yeah, and I would say probably that's worth a challenge here for Portland. Uh, yeah. And the there you go. Just, yep. Ramos, good with the uh, red handkerchief alert, will throw the flag, and um, we'll get a better look, I hope, here on the, the replay. Let's take a look. Tell me what you saw, Ramos. Yeah, I think he's able to have enough, enough possession on the field of play. I actually think on the first side that was a catch. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's a catch, actually. I think that's enough possession in field of play to rule it a first down. I agree. Let's see what Ref62 says. He does overturn the call on the field. It's a good challenge for Portland. And Art Vandelay has a first down catch on the outside. Matt South, a completion here, one for one so far to start the day. Yeah, and here in the SFL, you know, basically they're ruling to have a catch in bounces to have enough possession visibly uh, inside the field of play before you go out of bounds. So he secured the ball with enough possession, what fit in, and uh, what foot in, sorry. And that's a rule, a catch. Single back for South. He will throw again. Three-step drop. Quick throw. Quick completion across the middle. 4-9. Catch made there by the tight end, Nelson Lozano, Jr. Yeah, he's a uh, very good uh, receiving target. Uh, also one of the rookie players, 6'6", 255. So a big man mis mismatch problem for linebackers and safeties alike. 
Didn't have a catch last week against Denver. He has one early here in tonight's contest, setting him up second and one. Right up the gut to Truesman, and he is ridden down. Rhett Sawyer was right there along with Drury. It'll be third and a yard. Yeah, one of those uh, men I did not talk about earlier, Jacob Farmer, also the fullback, number 49. It's going to be important for him to make a good job on, on blocking in front of the running back if they want to have success. They will line up with just one in the backfield, two tight ends on the field, two receivers against a 4-3. Matt South, short drop, will throw a beautiful out route to the top, and that is out of bounds there. Gene Valentine has a first down to the 49-yard line. Ramos, Las Vegas backed out of that one, and Portland checked down for an easy first down. Yeah, Gene Valentine, one of the two receivers from Ottawa last season, as uh, they, well, you know, he with Art Vandley, one of the most explosive couples in the SFL land last, last year. Well, I didn't know those two were dating. Oh, not like that. <laughs> uh, South here on a seven-step drop. Pressure coming, and he's walloped in the backfield. I believe that's Rhett Sawyer who got there, and that for Rhett Sawyer is 59th career sack. Yeah, Rhett Sawyer, the former Tulsa Desperado. He, this is his um, third season with the Las Vegas Fury, one of the best defensive lineman, interior defensive lineman in the SFL for sure in the past three or four years. Heavy set. You wouldn't imagine they would pass out of this, but on second and 19, you, you'd fathom that they would. They will throw. South will check it down to Truesman on this left-hand side. Truesman not through the first guy. Slyn Shady rides him down at the 46. And speaking about short tacklers and great players, Lynn Shady coming up from the Seattle Tyrants, also former London Knight player, one of the, the best tacklers that the SFL has had for, for a few seasons as well. Slyn Shady, 52 tackles for loss in his career, along with two sacks, had five tackles last week. Low snap to South. South under pressure, cannot evade. Day Drury comes through with a huge sack right there for the Fury. The former renegade, Day Drury, he was used more as a coverage linebacker in the oh. renegade scheme a few seasons ago. Coming up a blitz and huge two, uh, fourth and 24. Time to punt here for Portland. The Fleet's drive stalls out after two big sacks. And uh, Portland only gave up one sack last week. They give up two here on the opening drive. That one stalls out and the Fleet have to kick it away. Return here for the Fury. will come out to the 28 and Ramos Scooter Smith was the tackle for Portland, who only allowed one sack last week. And like I said, they give up two, and, and that turns the ball over to Tom Rahman and this offense for Las Vegas. Yeah, and I think it's going to be important here for Vegas to not to turn the, uh, the ball over. They have a few rookies on this offense. But again, I, I think it's important for Vegas to establish their own pace um, and, and try to run the ball a little bit to start. Rahman will give out of the backfield to Scott Johnson. Johnson, the second-round Pick 28th overall out of Annapolis will pick up a yard. Good defensive play here for Portland. As we said, you know, they looked so much improved, much more improved last week against Denver as uh, they were they were really close to get their first victory in franchise history. Well, and this front seven for Portland is devastating if you're not careful. Another heavy formation here. They'll give to Johnson up the gut, and Johnson wrestled down by Mel Davis, who was Defensive Rookie of the Year last year. Yeah, Portland had the you know, probably the most impressive group of signings when, when you talk about the linebacking court. Mel Davis, as you said, previous a Defensive Rookie of the Year, also a man takes and Frank Champion, uh, you know, two of the best linebackers in the SFL. Split backs here, Rahman, quick throw, bobbled in, picked off, taken away by Portland. It's intercepted by Derek Majors. He had a pick six last week, and he's got another takeaway this week. And I think that was Mel Davis in coverage, number 52, as we take a look at the replay. Not from his perspective, actually, that was number 44, Bob Funk, the, the corner, man-to-man -man coverage, 6'4", 220, the rookie, uh, first-round pick out of Birmingham, and good tight coverage by him. And uh, Portland, you know, that, that's exactly what they need. They, they need the, the takeaways to get the ball to their offense and short field positions. What an interception to turn the tides here. Majors, a third-round pick, 
number 65 overall, takes it away. And now they go to Truesman on the ground, and Slim Shady is right there to make another tackle at the 45. Good, good job by, by both, actually, uh, front sevens in this game. Obviously, Vegas has a couple of sacks, and John Truesman has had no success on the ground as uh, Portland looked very strong in their first def the first defensive drive as well. Three wide here, South. Blitz coming, and Red Sawyer rings home 60 career sacks. His second in this game. He had two last week, and he's got two here in the opening six minutes. Almost unblocked as Red Sawyer came with full steam into the quarterback. And uh, this is, again, exactly what Portland doesn't want. Third and 17. Uh, back there, you have guys like Max Jackson and Thomas Rahman Jr., those guys, and, and they are ball hogs. You, you don't want to throw the ball to those guys. South in the gun. He will look to sling it. Pressure coming late. Safe check down there, and it's good for a couple to Art Vandelay, but not nearly enough for the first down. And Portland will punt again, but a safe throw, Ramos. Yeah, it's better than getting intercepted, but, you know, you have the risk of a pick six, so, you know, you're... You're gaining the field, uh, sorry, field position battle here in the first quarter, and uh, just check it on to your to your guy, and let's see what he can do. Dominic Birkin on to punt this one away. Snap a little to the left. Las Vegas came after it, but could not get the block. This one's going to bounce at the six, bounce at the two. Oh, perfect! Check back there on the bounce, and it's down at the three yard line. What a punt for Portland! Yeah, that's Dominic Birkin, the, the punter. Uh, non-contracted player with one of the best plays we've seen in the first quarter so far is the ball balanced at the one and just came backwards to or forward to the three yard line and you know Vegas with a with a serious risk or of you know get taking a safety three four look out of Portland maybe some blitz coming here they'll give the Scott Johnson Johnson a spin move has a couple will pick up five as Portland brought a little bit of, of a blitz and Amon takes has to tackle him from behind Take 6'2", 243, uh, coming from the Baltimore Vultures. The first, His first four seasons were uh, uh, right there with Baltimore and, you know, again, securing one of the best, if not the best, linebacking core in the SFL. 4-3 look here out of Portland. Two in the backfield for Las Vegas. They will give it off this left-hand side to Johnson. Doug Britton has a good block out there, and it springs Johnson for a first down. Britton, 6'1", 248, played with the San Jose flight. He was a receiver but turning into a fullback right there and a good block as you said to get a first down for vegas let's run through this offense for las vegas tom Rahman, the quarterback johnson and britain the backfield members a star miramontes john blades lz Pryor, and mason kirby are the four receivers and garrison blue the tight end round out this offense here's the give to johnson left side with blockers johnson finally wrestled down at the 26th just could not wait for the block of Mason Kirby to develop. Yeah, he needed to have maybe a little bit more patience. Uh, patience, sorry, uh, for the blocks to develop. If if he picks up a couple more blocks, that's probably going all the way. Ramen four touchdowns, one pick last week has already thrown a pick tonight against this tough Portland Fleet defense. Low snap here on first and ten. Plenty of time. Delivers across the middle. Tipped up and incomplete. Dangerous looking throw. Mel Davis almost got two hands on it, and we have a player down. Yeah, that's A star Miramontes, the wide receiver on the ground. As we hope it's nothing serious, but he got completely uh, whacked by a defender, it seemed. As yeah, that's that's cool. the linebacker. That's nice Mel Davis. Something. I don't know what we're looking at right there, but. Not whatever sure. it was, vital. Maybe that was the inside of whatever injury uh, Miramontes <laughs> suffered. Yeah, um, no, not, not sure. Maybe maybe they're just trying to hide the nasty <laughs> hit by by Mel Davis as he put his full 245 weight on on his body. That'll set them up here on second and ten. Split backs here from the 26. Ramen short drop pressure coming and he cannot evade sack made there for the Portland Fleet. The play is made by Bernard Patterson. Yeah, good pressure here for Portland as they collapse the pocket. You know, that's what happens, Andy, when you don't have one of those receivers who can get open quick. You can just, you know, do press man-to-man -man coverage, and no receiver was open on the middle of the field. 
Third and 12, empty here, offsides, free play. Raman gonna take a shot down the field and it's nearly taken away, but no harm, no foul. The offsides will give him five yards. Yeah, good job by Raman, just trying to take a, sh a, ch a chance and uh, get a big play. Dakota Johansson was there for the deflection. This Portland fleet has some stars all over the field. Nuevo was the one who jumped off sides, and let's run you through this Portland defense. Bernard Patterson and Gary Burney are the defensive tackles. Robert Brar and Derwin Nuevo are the ends. Mel Davis, Amon Takes, and Frank Champion, the veteran linebackers. Chris Stock, Derek Majors, Bob Funk, are the cornerbacks Dakota Johansson and Shaud Allen are the safeties. David John does the kicking duties for this fleet team. A lot of new faces and some veteran linebackers to round out this defensive unit. Raman here on third and seven, slings it near side, caught for the first down, turning up field to make the play. There is Max Rockentansky. Uh, Interesting last name, but he's got a first down. And he is normally the number four, no, sorry, the number five receiver on this team as they have Miramontes, Blades, Pryor, and Kirby as their starting four. So the number five wide receiver comes in and gets a big first down. And that will set them up at the 42. There is a look at Scott Johnson's numbers. Five carries for him. Had a couple good ones to start this drive off. Twins, bottom of the formation, single back. They give to Johnson, and he is walloped from the 4-3. Bernard Patterson falls on top of him. So far, so good here for Portland to stop the inside runs. They have had a little bit of an issue stopping the outside runs, but inside they look pretty strong as uh, they are trying to make a stop. Three members of that defensive line, 6'6", six, six, two of them over 300 pounds, some big rookies on that line. Here is the give left side. Johnson dropped in the backfield. Mel Davis right there to make the play. Mel Davis, the former Denver Nightwing, making the big stop for a loss of three yards. And, you know, this is exactly what Portland won. So if they can just unleash those hounds, again, Brower, Nuevo, uh, Patterson, and Bernie, uh, just trying to get to the quarterback, see if you can put some pressure. Eighth career tackle for loss for Davis. It sets up third and 13. Raman, short out route there, is not going to get to the sticks. Mason Kirby with the grab, and that'll set up fourth and seven as these two te teams trade punches. Yeah, and this has been a field position battle so far as Las Vegas will now try to pin Portland deep, just like Portland did in this previous right. possession. And uh, let's see if Vegas can be as, as successful on that. Bluto Batart... Blatarski is on to punt this one away for Las Vegas. It feels like we've seen a lot of uh, body shots, Ramos, and we're waiting to see a big uppercut at some point here from one of these two squads. Return here for Vandalay. Just gets out to the 16-yard line, covered well on the Fury. Yeah, and even though Portland has uh, you know, a lineup with some rookies, I mean, you have very talented players. As I said, Vandalay and Van with Ottawa last season, they were very good. Connor Weston was a player last season in, in Florida, so he's no uh, newcomer to the SFL. And uh, Nelson Lozano, who already has a couple catches at tight end. South and Trusman, the two in the backfield against a 4-3. Short drop. South will deliver near side. No, out of bounds there. Catch made by Weston, but not in the field of play. Yeah, that did seem like an incompletion. And even if... That was, uh, you know, 50-50. It's, I don't think, worth a challenge. Uh, since that was you know, probably just a three-yard gain if caught. Matt South completing 68% of his passes last week against Denver. His career, he completes 68.6% of his passes. So if you're looking for a consistent quarterback, Matt South might be your guy. Shotgun snap. South moves in the pocket, delivers far side. That one's caught on the sidelines for three. And A-star Miramontes will not return tonight. Yeah, that's that's a shoulder injury. And, you know, as, as we said, uh, Mel Davis just put, put his full weight on the wide receiver as he made the hit. And we will not have him for the rest of the game, but he will be back for next week. Shotgun four wide here. Matt South, pressure coming, has to unload. Caught near side, just short of the sticks. Connor Weston. Makes the grab there. The rookie cannot turn up field, and that'll be in three and out. 
I got the former running back for the Storm. Also played in the minors as a running back, trying to get accustomed to the wide receiver position and, and right there, just shy of the first down. Birkin back on, had a beautiful punt on the last drive to pin the Fury deep. We'll try and flip the field here at the end of the first quarter. Let's see if they take the snap or let this thing run. They will kick. Return man for Vegas will field it at the 40 and move up to the 44. And that will take us to the end of the first quarter. Andy Hamilton along with Ramos Lynn. Portland 0, Las Vegas 0. These two teams are locked at nothing. Don't go anywhere. It's the SFL on Twitch. Back here, Las Vegas, Nevada, the site of tonight's game. David Harrell along with KT Harrell are running the stats for us. Cameron Irvine producing behind us in the booth here along with Ramos Lynn. I'm Andy Hamilton from Las Vegas. Tom Rahman on first and 10 will check down, and that is a loss of yardage. We're read beautifully by the Portland Fleet. Right there was Robert Brawer to make the tackle. Yeah, the rookie was a seventh round pick, 117th overall. So, you know, talk about some value in the in the later rounds. He was a supplemental pick as, uh, you know, gets the starting gig and as the left defensive end gets, gets a good stop for a loss. Twins to the top of the formation. Johnson, the lone back for Raman. They will give to Johnson off this left-hand side, and he's punished. And what a hit. That's a big, big hit by number 99. Uh, right there, just go ahead. Ramen, deep shot and almost taken away. That was Frank Champion on the first tackle, and then the deflection on the hurry up is made by Sean Allen. And it almost caught the Portland fleet off guard. Allen had to actually run backwards uh, to, try to make the stop as he was caught uh, picking in the backfield. So good job by him recovering to the play and making the deflection as Vegas almost got him deep. Blatarski will come on to kick this one away on 4th and 12. We flip sides of the field, but these teams still can't get anything going, at least not on Las Vegas' first possession of the second quarter. Punt away from Blatarski. Vandalay back to return this one. Little stop and go. Oh, and he's punished for it. Yeah, he is. That's a, that's a big hit. But again, uh, you know, at least Portland gets a better field position than last time. Last time they were... You know, inside the three-yard line, and they're this time past the 20. That was LZ Pryor who laid the hit. A star player. Got to give some love to Pryor for uh, a special teams play. Love when star players are playing on special teams. 3-3 three, three look out of the Fury. South under center will take a seven-step drop. He's under pressure. He's going to run with it. Matt South lowers the shoulder, and he'll pick up two. Uh, Ramos you know good decision making but you know not quick enough to get to the sticks there yeah no i agree and the coaching staff in portland is just going to have a chat with the quarterback because you know you cannot do that i mean you have um you know just one quarterback essentially you only have one star quarterback if he's out for the rest of the game your your chances of winning actually diminish a lot We'll get through this Las Vegas defense here in a moment. South pressured, and he will go down again. Red Sawyer, his third of the game. Man, they have no answer for him. Portland is trying to do the best job as they can, but the Fury are sending some guys on a blitz, so that you have to go one-on-one -on -one against them. And Scooter Schmidt, you know, unfortunately the victim of the, of the veteran pass rusher, uh, allows a sack. Third and a country mile. They have to get to the 33 in order to move the chains. Four down linemen for Las Vegas. Short drop. South going to fire on a corner out. Picked off. And right out of bounds in front of his coach is Max Jackson. His 40th career interception. Man, Max Jackson read that one all the way as Matt South just an ill-advised throw. That's double coverage. Beautiful play design by the Vegas defense. That's double coverage on the outside receiver. And uh, Andy actually seemed that either one of those guys could have come away with the interception. My Mary Kaitera was blanketing the wide receiver on that one too. Yeah, arguably two of the better defenders in Las Vegas' secondary. Not to say that any of 
Las Vegas's secondary is someone to test. They have some real dogs on that side of the field, and we'll get to their defense later on in tonight's broadcast. First play here after the pick is a give to Johnson. Johnson fights forward for a couple. An off-tackle run works for five. You know, and the Fury offense would really like to score some points in this drive. You know, every time you get a turnover, especially in opposing side of the field, you have to come away with points. If not, uh, you could pay dearly. There's a look at Mason Kirby yawning at the, the secondary member. They have not tested this secondary too much tonight. One interception for the fleet so far. They give to Johnson on a trap play, and Johnson walloped in the backfield again. And Ramos, you and I talked about this before the broadcast. For Las Vegas, it, you know, they you would imagine with this linebacking core, they'd want to throw the ball a little bit more. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, but again, you know, Portland had a couple of pick six just last week, so not an easy secondary to test either. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how the chess match between offenses and defenses uh, continue in this game. Split backs here, short drop for Raman. Pumps once and dropped. Raman goes down, and that sack is made there by Patterson again. Yeah, 6'6", 330. That's a big man in the middle of the field as number 64 gets the sack. I still think this is field goal range, but they're going to punt here, Andy. I'm, I'm pretty surprised, actually. You think wrong. Blatarski is on to try and <laughs> kick this one away. I also thought they would have brought out o Otis Bordeaux, although Ramos, his career-long... So far in the NFL is 25 yards. No more than that for Bordeaux. This one will bounce into the end zone, and maybe they should have gone with the field goal attempt because that one is going to roll back for a touchback. Yeah, and, and you know, Andy, yeah, I understand, you know, he's a rookie and he has not attempted many long field goals, but I will at least try it. I mean, it was a 53-yarder. You're in your home, uh, home turf. There's uh, no wind, um, so... You know, pretty surprised by the decision, but, you know, I think Vegas, you know, is like, you know, we, we're playing good defense and we can get the ball back, we think. Four wide, gun straight here for Matt South. Pressure coming, unloads far side, tipped up. Ooh, dangerous pass. Very dangerous. Tomasino Raman gets in uh, front of the receiver and makes a deflection. If that's picked up, that's going all the way for six. She had a pick six last week as well, along with... One tackle for loss, 12 tackles, and a pass deflection. She really doing her thing on this Las Vegas side of the ball. 4-3 look out of the Fury. South will take a five-step drop. Pressure coming. Spins. 360. No scope is picked off. It's taken away by Merrick Itera. They tested him, tried to avert his eyes, and Itera says, I'll take that. Thank you very much. Yeah, another ill-advised throw here for Matt South as he did a 360 spin and just try to throw it. I mean, to be fair, he had a step on the on the defender. That was um, Gene Valentine, the intended receiver. But Merrick Itera with the back frame 6, 3 to 25, jumps up and gets the ball as Fury will try again. Fernando DSF in the chat says he expected the over-under to be 65.5 points total. On this pace, he wouldn't be surprised if it's 65.5 offensive yards. And I think... We are on pace for that potentially. Hit, or uh, flip out to Johnson. Johnson will pick up three. Yeah, the over under at 65 and a half. You know, to be fair, I thought that was a little bit high, even though we have two very capable offenses. Um, you know, Portland showed again a lot of improvement on defense last week. You know, the Vegas Fury uh, also have, uh, you know, Red Sawyer and those boys who can make stop. 94 offensive yards so far between the two teams. Here's the give to Johnson, and he's going to turn that on its head. Nice 12-yard run to the 21. Yeah, good play there by the offensive line making the block. Actually, no star offensive lineman here for Vegas, but they did a great job on just getting an outside block right there. As you can see, Scott Johnson with a little bit of a delay handoff, just waiting for his blockers to pick up some guys on the defense. So look at Johnson's numbers, 37 yards tonight so far. That, I think, was his longest run of the night. 4-3 look again out of the fleet. Short drop for Raman. Dumps underneath and incomplete. That ball was a little bit of a floater. He needed more of a dart. Yeah, that, that was a little bit too soft of a pass. Uh, that's for Lawler. Uh, that's number 85 on this Vegas Fury. And, you know, he's not one of the uh, starting tight ends. He's actually the, the backup. 6'4", 225, but 
you know, I think you need a little bit more more power into it. 6.16 to go here in this second quarter. Fast-moving ball game. Not a lot of points on the board to be had. Here is Raman on a five-step drop. Pressure coming. Has to evade. Raman's going to run for it now, and he'll slide smartly at the 16-yard line. Yeah. Unlike Matt South, who tried to truck a man, he actually, Raman slides on that one. And a good, wise decision by, by the veteran. Uh, that's third and four. Very manageable. As you know, the, the whole playbook up and stuff, you can throw a short pass. You can even run it if you dare. I mean, here, run up the middle. You know, there's no linebacker up the middle here. Bunch to the top. Portland showing man. Here is Raman going to sling, and that is incomplete. Portland did a really good job on the defensive side of closing on the ball. Bob Funk with the deflection. Good discipline, and that's that's what you have when, when you can you know scout and you have some film on the opposing team. They knew that was going to be an inside pass, so every, every corner was with inside leverage, and they were able to knock the ball away. Now Otis Bordeaux on to try and put this one through. Ramos 100% so far in the SFL, 3 for 3. Season long is 25 yards. This kick is blocked! Portland came in, and they blocked it right up the middle. The play was made there by Leif Russell. Yeah, that's the broadcaster jinx right there. It's not 100% anymore, but what a play here for Portland trying to uh, make a block. They get there, and that's huge when, when you can turn the tide and get momentum on your side of the field and keeping the game scoreless. Well, Bordeaux was 75% in the SFLM, now is 75% in the SFL. The first round pick, number 10 overall, has his kick blocked. Truesman up the middle, gashes the defense for six. That's that's about the best run we've seen out of Truesman and the best job probably the Portland Fleet offensive line had done on the Vegas Fury defensive line all game long. As uh, you know, Portland has five minutes and 20 seconds. They have a lot of time with three timeouts to put a score on the four. Truesman, the lone back, three receivers wide here. Against this four-down lineman, look for Vegas. Seven-step drop, pressure coming. South evades once, cannot evade the second round. He's dropped in the backfield, and I believe that might have been uh, Day Drury again. Yeah, that's his second sack of the day. And, you know, what What Fear, the Vegas Fury is doing is they're sending six men, Andy. So that's six men against five offensive linemen. And uh, so one, one of those guys is going to come free. In that case, that was Day Drury. And the Vegas Fury get to the quarterback. You know, Matt South needs to do a better job on throwing the ball quicker than that. Third and 13. South up today, 7 of 10. His, he has 45 yards. He'll throw, dumps across the middle, caught right at the sticks. They'll give him the first down catch made by Weston. Yeah, great catch by Weston. Just extending the ball as much as he could to get the first down, but a great read by South. He pumps fake to the pump fakes to the right, throws to the left as Weston just barely but got the first down. Well, well protected too there. Scooter Smith does his job on that play. You know, after getting bull rushed on second down to protect enough for the long throw on third down is big for Portland as they move the chains. South moving in the pocket, just checks down. Nice catch there made by Lozano Jr. right in front of the defender. Yeah, good job there by South, just gaining a couple extra seconds to throw the ball to his tight end. And, you know, Vegas is doing a lot of blitzing with a lot of press man coverage one-on-one. -on -one. So if, if Matt South can find a couple of extra seconds, he's going to find an open man. Well, Derwin makes a good point there in the chat. A swing pass or a screen would really or could really open this thing up. Two in the backfield, three wide. They give right up the gut here, and Truesman will pick up a yard. Yeah, and I, I agree with him. Uh, you know, if, obviously, it's been said for many years that the best recipe against the press man and blitzing is uh, screen passes, as you can really mitigate that pass rush. But, you know, it seems that Portland is trying to go vertical more often than not, and, you know, it's been mixed results so far. Third and two. They need six feet. South pressured, South dropped! Down in the backfield, Tank Hut brings him down. Tank Hut, the rookie, third round pick out of Annapolis. As uh, so he got to uh, Matt South on that one, and, and the Vegas Fury is really dominating on those third down situations on defense. 
It's been sack after sack after sack against Matt South so far. Looks like the chat is alerting us that it's Tank Hut's birthday. Happy birthday, Mr. Hank. How about that for some icing on the cake? Kick is away here. Return man Max Jackson, ever dangerous. Gets away from one, but not through the second wave. Ramos, 2.35 to go in the second. Did you imagine that we'd be looking at some double goose eggs? No, uh, not at all. And, and neither did the, the Jack Stats team. They had a 65.5 over under. And, uh, you know, it's it's been tough sledding for both offenses. The Vegas was favored in this game by seven points. And, you know, they look good so so far in some, game, in some cases, but not enough to put some points on the board. Give off this right side, Johnson. Scott Johnson into the open field. Johnson down the sideline, and he will get to the 35-yard line. What a run. Now that's beautiful blocking there for the Vegas Fury offense. Portland Fleet's defense was caught napping, and they actually did not react fast enough to the, to the stretch play as uh, the front seven was, you know, frozen for a second. Maybe they thought there was going to be a play action or something, but uh, just wide open space for, for Scott Johnson on the right side. 38 yards, I believe the longest play for either team's offense as Scott Johnson ignites this Fury team now on the fleet side of the field. Bunch formation here, just over two minutes. They get, oh, Johnson buried in the backfield. Absolutely demolished there by Derwin Nuevo. Yeah, that was no chance as Nuevo, the, f the fifth round pick, also one of the supplemental picks, gets in for a stop. Two minutes to go here in Nevada. 0-0. Zero, zero. These two teams fighting it out. Well, if you like defense, this is the game for you. Split backs here. No points on the board. These teams clawing at one another. Ramen to throw, fires on the out route, caught there by Kirby. He will get to the 33. As uh, you know, Vegas is trying to get in a closer wave to, to field goal range, even though we've seen that that's not a guarantee as Portland already has a blocked field goal. But uh, with a third and seven, Andy, if I'm if I'm Vegas, I'm not risking an interception. If, if it's not there, I'm just, you know, throwing it a check down. But the worst thing you can, that it can happen also is a sack. So let's see what they do. Excuse me, LZ Pryor on the last catch. Ramen will sling this sidearm down to the bottom of the screen. That's Kirby, and he's got the first down to the 17. Yeah, beautiful throw right there by Ramen. He knew the pressure was coming in, and he threw the ball to the man doing an out route. That's Mason Kirby as he successfully beats the man-to-man -man coverage. Gets open for a first down as Vegas is trying to open up this game in the scoring board. One twenty-three to go here in the second. And Las Vegas has opened this up in terms of the passing offense. Raman getting things going through the air to two of his receivers. Johnson dropped! Wow, Portland coming off the edge with some heat. Yeah, completely unblocked uh, Frank Champion on that one, and that was... A very, very good play call again by the Portland defense, just like the previous play uh, where they were able to stop the guy behind the line of scrimmage. Same scenario. Second and 13. Under a minute to go here in the second. Raman slings down the middle of the field. Caught to the goal line, and the penalty is going to put it even closer. Whoa, did they mark him in? I think that he's short by a yard, but that's going to make it to, like, the half-yard line. They marked him at the two. And so that penalty is going to put them at the one. Wow, what a play for Las Vegas. A pinpoint accurate throw from Raman. Yeah, you know, that was man-to-man -man coverage. So when it's man-to-man, -man, you really need to throw the ball into a, into a tight window. It's going to see a replay here from the safest perspective as he's unable to, yeah, he's unable to make the deflection and, you know, just frustration putting his full body into the, into the receiver. That was Shaw to Allen on the late hit. Now Ramos, Portland can bring all three linebackers downhill. Interesting to see what the Fury do here. Potentially an opportunity for a screen, but if they try and run up that gut, they might run into some issues here. Two to the bottom of the screen here, receivers-wise. One man's completely unguarded. 
Cornerback to the top for Portland. They will throw. Ramen slings inside. That is caught, and that is going to be a touchdown. Catch is made, and they will mark Garrison Blue in for the score. Yeah, I think he was in just barely by the nose of the football right there. As we're going to take a replay, uh, look at the replay here. Uh, Ramen, good throw inside. And, and yeah, I think that with that stretch, that's just enough. But yeah, that's going to be reviewed, and, and I'm not surprised. It's about as close as it gets. I wonder if we're going to have a shot down the line. They did throw. Blue made the catch. The question is, did he cross the line here? Oh, man, that's a terrible angle to try and look at this. They only look at it once. Yeah. Anyone's guess here, and this one will... No, they're going to call it back. No touchdown. Garrison Blues catch wiped off the board, and we go back to zeros. That's crazy. Uh, you know, we only t took a look at one replay. Maybe the official had a couple of different looks at it, but that's... That's, that's, you know, that's surprising to say the least. Now they'll go heavy. One in the backfield, full back on the line. They're going to give off this left side. Johnson, no, denied at the line. Unbelievable. I say try again, actually. Full line. They will give to Johnson. Left side. Johnson dropped. And Portland has a stand. Wow, what a stop by Portland. That's one of the best goal line stands we've seen in a very long time Andy I mean first and goal you have the ball at the one yard line you have a completed catch in a couple of runs and you are not able to get in that's unbelievable as man if Portland gets into the kicker's face and block it again I swear Otis Bordeaux on he missed earlier in the contest on a field goal attempt he is just about 20 yards away here, a chip shot. Low snap, kick on the way, and good from 19. Otis Bordeaux puts Las Vegas in the lead, 3-0. As uh, for one split second, I thought that that could be blocked again. Snap and the hole was pretty sketchy, but uh, fortunately for the Vegas special teams unit, uh, just enough blocking to give the kicker enough time to put that between the uprights for, for three points. 34 seconds left for Portland to see if they want to try anything here at the end of this half. Kick on the way. Vandalay will bring it out to the 22-yard line. They do have all three timeouts, though. Yeah. And for, for the ones uh, you know, that are wondering, uh, I think the, per the least scored game in SFL history is like 6-3. to three. I remember the San Francisco Bulldogs were involved in one of those games as uh, the game ended you know, six points to three. So not saying it's going to happen in this game, but, you know, we are on pace for only six points in the whole matchup. <laughs> Heard you like defense. Three yeah. receivers wide here for South. Pumps wants pressure coming. Evade Sawyer cannot evade the second wave. Down he goes. Man, this defensive lineman is just having a party here in the backfield as uh, Portland will just take this into the half and just try to figure out what they can do, especially in the offensive line, Andy. I mean, overall, they have been pretty good. I mean, the run has not been terrible. The defense has been unbelievable, but it's just they're unable to protect their quarterback. A.K. Jones on the play there. South, seven-step drop, pressure coming, unloads, tipped up, almost taken away. Dangerous floater there. He was trying to find Jacob Farmer, the fullback. Yeah, that's a very dangerous throw, Elliot Bison. He should not have thrown that one. That could have been a pick six. That will take us to the half. Three, nothing. Las Vegas on top here at home. The fleet going to head into the locker room with a goose egg on the board. And Ramos, if you like defense, this is the game for you. If you like offense, these two teams fairly evenly matched, although a couple big Scott Johnson runs lead the way. Yeah, and even though Vegas is winning this game three to nothing, if you look at it, this is exactly what Portland wants to do, actually, in this game. They they have a strong defense. They showed, again, a, a very strong defensive outing against Denver. So, you know, when you're on the road, you know, having the game three to nothing, you know, it's just anybody's game and one big play can just change the whole complexity of the ball game. So um, even though, again, Vegas is winning, uh, Portland has this what where they want. You know, I think if they can limit the whole game to less than 40, 45 points, they have a good shot. 
Matt South's QBR 40.7. Raman's only a slightly better 43.4. Both QBs over 65% completion percentage, only averaging 4.9 yards per attempt. Two interceptions for South, only the one for Tom Raman. Uh, Las Vegas having trouble getting some of their receivers involved. Kirby has a lot of catches. LZ Pryor has one on the Portland side. Every star receiver has a catch, including Nelson Lozano, the tight end. On defense, it's really the Red Sawyer show. Three sacks for him. Tank Hutt and AK Jones also both have a sack. And a sack on the Portland side for Bernard Patterson really make up this 3-0 ball game. Buckle your seatbelts. I have a feeling it's going to get exciting. Return here for Jackson. Nice return out to the 27. Yeah, and you cannot forget also Dave Drury, who has a couple of sacks. So, you know, as a team, Vegas has about, what, seven sacks in the day. Uh, you know, for Portland, they, they, you know, they need to limit this um, considerably if they want to have a shot to winning it. Las Vegas will start with the ball they kicked off to start this contest. Portland in a 4-3 defense back out on the field. Portland wearing white, Vegas in black. Hand off Johnson, left side with room. Scott Johnson across midfield and down to the 43. What a run. And that's the exact same play, Andy, that they ran on that big 38-yard run. So, you know, obviously the coaches um, looked at it at, at halftime. And first play of the second half, they go right back to it. Well, and Ramos, where is the crowd? They must all be at the concession stand. They're, they're not very excited for a huge run from Scotty Johnson. Well, I mean, it's been it's been a slow-paced game, so you have to wonder if some of those fans have been sleeping a little bit, and, <laughs> and hopefully that ignites them and, and they wake up. Well, that's the Fury's fault for their giveaway of pillows today at this contest. Bump and run for Portland. Nice toss across the middle. That is good for six. And we will step aside for a quick game break from SFL Commissioner Cameron Irvine. Thank you, Andy. Warren Murray cannot be tackled tonight. Murray scores again. It's 126 yards on nine carries. And Houston leads Lone Star 21 to six with five minutes to go in the second quarter. Back to Andy Ramos and the Horrells, the rest of the gang in bed. Back here in Vegas, first down run there for Scott Johnson, right up the gut. We're almost there, getting him involved early and often. Yeah, and, and you know this Portland defense, uh, you know, a little bit tired, uh, even though we're coming out of the half. You know, as you said, this is about 108 degrees here in Vegas. So you know, if, if Vegas can keep running the ball and tiring this defensive line, they they have a good shot of scoring points here in this drive. Fans are on on the sideline, although the fan doesn't look like it's going very fast. Raman going to take a fast shot. Deep caught. Touchdown, Las Vegas. What a sling. And it's Mason Kirby who puts the score from three to nine. Six points. Yeah, and, and they just basically want him to sleep. It's just like run, run, run. And then the deep shot to Mason Kirby as uh, throw, uh, Thomas Raman, Tom Raman throws a perfect pass to number 83, the former Seattle Tyrant player. Pass a touchdown, and this is the first touchdown of the game, finally. Right over the top of Derek Majors, and Otis Bordeaux will come on to try and add the extra point. Ramos, I told you it was going to get more exciting. You you didn't believe me. I know you didn't. <laughs> I mean, I did. I mean, it's, you know, that's what happens with those uh, halftime adjustments. You know, the coaches look at what happened, and they are looking forward to exploit the defenses and, Vegas did it very successfully in this first drive over the second half. 10 nothing, Las Vegas on top. The Fury 1-1 one and one, taking on the Portland Fleet 0-2 oh and, and have zero points to their name. And the Fury will kick it back to the Fleet. Their opening drive goes roughly 60 yards and they score to open this second half. Return here, Vandalay brings it off his own goal line out across the 20. Spin move up to the 23. Download Crowdplay, our new partner for 2020, and play the game about the game. Follow all the action and answer questions for a chance to win a share of the $1,000 prize pool. Your next chance is tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern 
on 11 Sports and for the fans when the Baltimore Vultures clash with the Carolina Skyhawks. You can visit crowdplay.com for more details. It's absolutely exciting, a blast. And just like this blast here, Matt South down the field incomplete. And a, a nice shot there, a good chance. Yeah, and Matt South just threw the ball there in a, you know, not with a lot of step on it. So the Vegas Fury defense actually had a couple of shots of coming away with the interception. So a very dangerous throw here for, for South. Speaking of chances, if you want a chance to win $1,000, like we were saying before, crowd play, an incredible opportunity. Uh, there's no catch. You, you just simply sign up with the app and you can play and win money. It, it's that simple. South, pressure coming, unloads left side, caught down a nine-yard pickup, just a yard shy of the sticks, Valentine with the grab. Yeah, great job on the out route here by Gene Valentine. Very good route, uh, getting loose for nine yards. And now on third and one, the question is, do you go ground or air? They have three in the backfield along with go with a screen Farmer. pass here, Andy. Not, sorry to cut you off. No, you're good. Lots of room to the bottom of the screen. They will hand it off to Truesman. Truesman has a first down and a couple more out to the 37. But I agreed with you, Ramos. The screen to the bottom would have been open. Yeah, I, that looked like press made a man coverage. And when you have a bunch formation, uh, you have a chance on offense to just make sure the defense is all stacked up in the middle of the field and uh, leave the sidelines open as they go with the same exact formation. And let's see if they go with the, with the screen here. Nine in the box for Las Vegas. They give it to Truesman up the middle, and Truesman threw one, but not through the second wave there. Eric Davis, the rookie, wraps him up. Davis, the fifth round pick, number 88th overall, also one of the um, supplemental draft picks. Linebacker 6'2", 235, making a strong stop because that's in the open field, and if he cannot make that stop, uh, that's a first down probably and maybe even more. South on a seven-step drop here on second and nine. Pressured and walks right into a sack. Las Vegas increases their total. Tank Hut, his second birthday present today. Man, Tank Hut is just absolutely ignited here in the last about 10 minutes of play as he just defeats his man one-on-one, -on -one, gets to the quarterback, and that's another sack. That's the eighth sack here for Matt South. And, and this has been the story so far, Andy, and this is why Portland doesn't have any points. It's been third and 14, third and 17 all game long. They need to get out across the 45 for a first. South going to take his shot. Oh, he underthrew the man. I don't know if there was a little interference there or what. Could not get it to Vandalay. Yeah, that, that, that looked uh, with a lot of contact there uh, on the far sideline. But either way, the referees let him play and... That's fourth and 14. And again, you know, promising drive, a promising set of plays for Portland. Uh, unable to, to capitalize as Vegas will get the ball back. The chat will have to let us know if they think that was a penalty. I, I would have thrown the yellow hanky. It was a beautifully scripted route, and that punt is blocked. Beautiful block there on the outside. And when it rains, it pours for Portland. The Fury have a block. Yeah, that's the punt blocker specialist, Merrick Itera. I remember... A game a couple of seasons ago, he had about three blocked punts in one game as uh, he is by far the best special teams player this league has ever seen in that category. Ron Hoff giving him a run for his money this season. Hoff has three. I called the Chicago game the other day, but Itera says, whoa, whoa, do not forget about me, young man. Three wide here for Raman on a five-step drop. Delivers on this near side. Catch made there by John Blades. Yeah, and actually I had the game against Tulsa, you know, Chicago against Tulsa, and that's the game that Ron Hoff got two blocked punts. Um, you know, I was, I was in the call that day with Jeff Malinishin, but a good good job here for Vegas in this, in this play, bringing a second and two, and they're really sitting down on offense, Andy. I mean, they look very comfortable here in the second half. And Schwint makes a good point in the chat. That's their second block of the game, one field goal, one punt. Raman stands in the pocket, sidearms tipped up and incomplete. Nice deflection there on the outside made by Majors. Already has a pick today. That was very dangerous there as Derek Majors, as you said, last week he had a pick six. And uh, if he comes away with those, you know, intercept with that interception with those two hands, that's probably going all the way um, if he can clear Scott Johnson. But, you know, Portland with a very important third down on defense, they cannot allow 
to this go to three scores. Oh, and excuse me, I, I was incorrect. Portland had the block on the field goal, not the Fury, but special teams for both teams playing a factor. The chat will always keep me honest, and uh, these kicking games, whether it's punting or field goal attempts, they have to be 100% on. Ramos short, or Raman short drop and deflected there away by the defender. Nice play there by Dakota Johansson. Yeah, that's a beautiful play by Johansson, the third-round pick out of Ottawa. And uh, that's exactly what you want on your safety. You know, good read coverage. Uh, sorry, good uh, read of the quarterback right there. Quarterback's eyes getting in front of the receiver and undercutting the route for a deflection. Good play. That'll set them up for a field goal attempt. Bordeaux on to try this one. This will be about a 31-yarder. Portland has already blocked one of them today. Snap was beautiful. Kick on the way from Bordeaux and good from 31 yards. It's 13-0. Still a two-possession game, though. Yeah, way better job there by the special teams unit of Vegas getting the hold down, and the kick is good. It's, you know, 13 to nothing. You know, it's, it's not a lot of points, Andy, but you have to think if, if Portland cannot uh, protect the quarterback because they haven't been able to, uh, it is 13 points uh, definite lead here. Kick away for Bordeaux. Portland will bring it off the goal line. Vandelay will bring it out there to the 22. If you're new to the Simulation Football League or you're what you're watching is the first controllerless eSport where strategy and AI, instead of thumbs, determine the outcome. Teams submit game plans prior to the simulation, and the results play out live in real time with hundreds of viewers turned players, scouts, coaches, and team owners on the field to create an all-new kind of virtual reality. Visit simulationfl.net for more information. Here is the handoff. Truesman right up the middle, and he will pick up four. And, you know, that, that run has worked um, here for, for Portland, uh, but it comes to a point where, you know, if they go try to make a pass and, and they get sacked, so they're behind the sticks again with a third and 12, third and 14. So, you know, hopefully for their team's sake, they can get positive yardage and a manageable third down at least. Four receivers wide. Truesman, the lone back in the backfield on second and six. They give the Truesman on a little bit of a dive play. Oh, Truesman almost got through the outstretched arms of Slynn Shady. Yeah, that was very close. As he was very patient, Cruzman was, uh, following his blockers and trying to get in the open field, but a good tackle there by the linebacker as uh, Vegas go, goes again with the press man-to-man -man coverage here, it looks like. Give to Trusman on third down, right up the middle, or is that Farmer? I think that might have been Jacob Farmer there for the first down carry. Yeah, it is. 6-1-2-3. 30, the rookie, and that's a beautiful play card here for, uh, here for uh, Portland. That's exactly what they needed. The wide receivers well, well covered, um, man to man. So the open uh, space was in the middle of the field and able to get the first down. Big play by, by the fullback. He had a carry for nine yards last week against Denver, has a carry for a first down here tonight against the Las Vegas Fury. Three receivers wide, two in the backfield. Nickel look out of Las Vegas. They give the Truesman. Truesman angles it off the right side for a yard. Good job by Trusman, but even a better job right there by Slinch. Tackle as, you know, Trusman saw there was no space in the middle of the field and quickly tried to bounce it off to the outside. But the linebacker, Slinch Shady, great run coverage on that one. Puts it down for a gain of only one. Shotgun look here. Trusman stands side car right. 3-2 look. Potentially some man for Vegas. Here's the throw to the bottom of the screen. Catch is made. It'll bring up third and four, and we will step aside for another game break with Commissioner Cameron Irvine. Everything going right for Houston. A pass that we think was intended for DR Sim. He dove for it, ended up getting in the way of the defender. Leroy Brown caught it, and Sim ends up becoming a blocker. Houston leads 35-6 with 15 seconds to go in the first half. Back to Vegas. Wow, if you like defense, this is the game for you. If you like offense, that's the game for you. Nice deflection there from Slynn Shady. Ends this Portland drive. Yeah, man, I mean, Slynn Shady has been all over the field there, um, both stopping the run and stopping the pass, as Drury basically has been their, their blitzer. 
But, uh, man, you know, this Vegas Fury defense is just playing a complete game. The pass rush is on point. They've been able to get uh, away with a couple of interceptions, and nothing is working here for Portland. Dominic Birkin on to kick this one away. It was blocked last time. The Fury stay away from it. They'll give Jackson a chance to return. Oh, Max Jackson spun through two and then was walloped. Man, that's a big hit, and Max Jackson, the Pro Bowl returner in safety uh not much room there as uh, you know in the other game you know lone star you know talking about lone star a little bit they, they they looked very impressive week one against the arizona scorpions and you know week two and week three um you know they, they've been defeated and well they're being defeated right now and you know it's been a little bit of a, a process there for for the lone star glory man defense here out of portland ramen under center here, will look to throw. Raman going to sling it down to Johnson. Johnson evades one. Johnson threw two. Wow, what a run from Johnson after the catch. Yeah, and that was Frank Champion's responsibility, actually. And instead of, you know, playing it safe, playing the man, he tried to maybe make a deflection. He thought the pass was going to be underthrown or something. As we take a look, number 99, he, he just did not Overran. play the ball correctly. Yeah, he overplayed it and... Scott Johnson with a lot of room all of a sudden because that that's the that's the risk of playing man to man Andy if the man is unable to stop the offensive player then it's going to take a while for for the rest of the defensive players to get there. Garrison Blue got out in front there and made a good block to set up that run from Johnson which gives them a new set of downs here. Ramen will dump it off to Johnson. Johnson fumbles, and that ball's still live, and Las Vegas luckily falls on it in the backfield. I think Johnson recovered his own fumble. Yeah, and, and if, if you're Portland, man, that's unacceptable. You have two defensive players right there to make the recovery, and none of them oh. can. Wow, how in the world? And that's Champion again. Two big errors from Frank Champion on this drive. Yeah, that, that's, that's pretty huge. I'm not sure if... That pass was actually sideways. Probably it was, but regardless, uh, number 99 has to do a better job at finding the football. Second and 15 now after the loss of a few. Plenty of room to the top. Here is Raman to throw. Raman will dump it off out of the backfield. That is the fullback making the grab. Doug Britton, he will pick up the five yards that they lost. Yeah, and Doug Britton, he was one of the best wide receivers, actually, Andy, in the SFL M season one season. Um, San Jose flight receiver and turning into a fullback showing those hands that he showed with the flight. This is what we wanted to see. Empty set here. The defensive backs for Portland manning up on the outside. Here is Raman. Pressure coming. He's dropped. Getting in the middle was Gary Burney and he makes a big sack at a clutch time. Man, that, that's been basically the summary of the whole game, hasn't it? There's just defenses playing good. Offenses cannot get any separation. And the defensive line's getting to the quarterback as Gary Burney, the fourth round pick out of Boise, gets in for a big sack. And that will set them up to have to kick it away. Blatarski will get all of this one, sending it, flipping the field for Vandele, who gets out to the 31-yard line. And, this, you know, this is crunch time here for Portland. They need to have a big play. They need to come away with some points. Even if it's just a field goal, we're, we're still, you know, in the third quarter. So, you know, try to get some points and, and try to climb back in this in this one. Fleet will bring out Matt South. Third season in the league. First season with the Fleet. Last played in Baltimore and Los Angeles. Here is the give up the middle to Truesman. Truesman will gain a yard. It's uh, second and nine here coming up for Portland. And, you know, the Vegas Fury uh, is just everything up the middle. They, they're having, um, you know, good success in stopping it. But, you know, second and nine, they they blitz their linebackers. They, they do their thing, and they put Portland behind sticks. Empty here on second and nine from the 32. Big drop for Matt South. Pressure coming, and Red Sawyer rings home, and another sack for Sawyer, his fourth of the day. Man, Red Sawyer came into this game with 49 sacks, and in this game he has about like 10% of those sacks in one game alone as the Portland offensive line has no answer for him. He'll go with the same formation, 3-2 look. 
here out of Las Vegas. They will bring four. South has to get rid of it deep down the middle, and that one is caught! Oh, somehow collected! I couldn't call it too early, but Weston collects it at midfield. I don't know how that got squeezed in between the safeties as uh, they do a better job on Red Sawyer, but man, how I wow. actually... Nick and Colin Trell, I'm not sure... Uh, Colin Trelli, sorry, how did she not come away with that interception? That's actually pretty crazy. Uh, but Portland will take it, and, and they will keep moving. Colin Trelli helping out social media clipping plays today. Big thank you to him. But an error there will give a new set of downs to Portland. Dangerous throw. It was almost cut on there on the outside. Thomas Rahman Jr. just a little short to try and play that one. Instead, it'll be second and 10. Yeah, and... He's a big, big corner. He's 6'1 as well, 200. Um, maybe if he's 6'2, he comes away with that interception because that just, <laughs> yeah, that just missed his hand. Three receivers wide here at midfield. 38 seconds to go in the third. Handoff up the middle. Truesman, nothing doing there. He's really struggled here as Slim Shady has had his number all night. Slim Shady, may, maybe the best run stopper linebacker, you know, a few seasons ago when he was in London. Just uh, an absolute tackling machine in the middle of the field, bringing his talents to to Vegas as, you know, it's a third and long again. And, and you know, the previous time it worked, but they need to double block Red Sawyer in this, in this play. Las Vegas will bring four. Pressure coming. He unloads out of the backfield. That is caught. Not getting enough there. He dumped it out to Truesman, and Truesman could not find the sticks. Man, good play. Just very unfortunate. He unable to cut to, to get past the sticks. That looked like a little bit of a, like a wheel route or something like that to the running back as he did not run flat. He actually turned it off field as we end the third quarter. That'll take us to the end of the third. 13-0. Fury on top of a nail biter. Do not go anywhere. Get your fours up in the chat. We have one quarter to decide who walks away with the victory. Dominic Birkin on to kick this one away. If I were Portland, I would have thought about going for this one in Fury territory. You only need a yard, but instead, Birkin will try and pin him deep. He's going to bounce to the nine, bounce to the two, and stop beautifully at the three-yard line. Birkin pins him deep again. Man, that's the second time this game he has put the ball inside the five-yard line as he's trying to get a lucrative contract right there but good job again by the portland fleet's uh special teams unit on corralling that ball before it gets to the to the end zone you know and we've seen time and time again the gunners get the ball but they run to the end zone put it the ball at the touchback 20 yard line uh not that time portland i mean if they can get a safety out of this it will be huge for them Four three look they give it to johnson johnson a nifty spin in the hole wow i thought he was dead to rights he jukes mel davis out of his socks and is able to pick up five and mel davis came flying in quite literally in the inside of the field and scott johnson just puts a spin on him gets a second and five and that's a massive play it's only five yards but that just takes you out of your shadow of the goal, goal line here is johnson he will only get back to the line of scrimmage there and good job right there again on sideline to sideline running. That's number 57 here for the Portland Fleet. Linebacker Tim Fannin, 6'2", 245. is not easy to stop a, a star running back in the open field. Third and five. Press man at the top of the screen. Trips tight. And Raman will throw. Extra pressure coming. He unloads and it's caught on this far side. First down to the 18. That catch is made by LZ Pryor. That's a perfect play call there for the bump and run man-to-man -man coverage. It's just the in, inside guy running an out route and the outside guys running in to kind of create like a pick play as uh, just enough space for Pryor to make the catch and a first down. They'll go with the trips tight formation again. Johnson, the lone back against a four down front. Raman going to throw, slings down the middle of the field. Wide open with the catch at the 39. That play is made by Blades. John Blades. One of the biggest wide receivers we have in the SFL, 6'4", 225, fifth-year man, all with, with the Vegas Fury. As enough time for Raman to throw the ball and a great route running uh, display here by John Blades as he gets open 
and has a first down. He was working against Johansson there and found a hole in the zone in the middle of the field. Nine minutes to go here in the fourth. A two-score game as Vegas holds on to their lead. Raman with pressure coming. Evades, throws down the middle, tipped up and incomplete. Nice defensive play there by Bob Funk. He's been all over the field today. Yeah, Bob Funk has had a very good game stopping the inside passes. He has great inside leverage on those situations, and he is able to undercut the routes and have his, have his hand on it. There was a receiver who used to play in Las Vegas called Brett Funk. I don't know if those two are related, but if so, this could be a family affair here returning to Vegas as Bob Funk has been making some plays. Johnson stuffed! Right there to make the play was Frank Champion. Frank Champion, a big-time play again. I mean, that's about the second or third time that we've seen number 99. I mean, we have had a few Funks back in the day in the SFL also. Skeletor P. Funk, he played for the Louisville Wolfpack as the quarterback. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so we have had a, a few uh, Funks play in the SFL. Raman, four-step drop on 30 and 12, unloads underneath, good tackle. Portland rallies to the ball, and they get off the field. Yeah, that, that's a very good play here for the Portland defense, just keeping everything in front of them. And, and a good check down here for Raman as well, just not throwing interception. You know your defense has played as as great as they have, you know, as you can play a defense. I mean, zero points for Portland, so just punt the ball, play some defense. Tom Rahman here, 15 of 21 today with one touchdown as the return here from Vandalay gets out to the 31. Ramos, some good news from Tom Rahman. Lots of players in the SFL this season have charities. Rahman's charity is Play Like a Girl, the Play Like a Girl Foundation which empowers girls to become impactful leaders in the STEM workforce by keeping them active in sports through middle school and trans translating the skills they gain from those sports to leadership in the classroom and ultimately the workplace. $5 for every touchdown he throws. He's got one today, so another $5 to the Play Like a Girl Foundation. Matt South, a check down here on first down to Lozano, gets back to the line of scrimmage, but... Uh, I am a big fan of all the players who are making donations based on their on-the-field play, and we have plenty of females playing in this league, and it's a great opportunity for anyone who wants to compete at any level. Uh, definitely, and the females, uh, female players have been unbelievable in the SFL. We have uh, you know, players like Ashley Jackson, Thomasina Rahman. You know, we have so many, and they are so, so good at what they do. Yeah, Thomasina Rahman, one of the impact players on this Las Vegas defense. Lozano there gets a drop in the middle of the field. It'll bring up a third and 10. You know, here in Mexico City, we have our own. We have KT Horrell and also Laura Horrell, uh, linebacker and fullback respectively. And they have been key parts for our for our team to go 2-1 and one this season. So far. Well, and key parts of the league all across the board. No doubt about that. South, short drop, fires. Oh, a one-handed grab at the top of the screen to keep the drive alive. Nelson Lozano, you are insane. No, excuse me, Valentine. Man, Gene Valentine, he was one of my favorite receivers. Oh, um, my. Man, that, that, that's not a good throw by, um, by Matt South, but Valentine just nags it with one hand. That is almost, that's about as close as you're going to get to an Odell Beckham style catch. The yeah. one hand turning away from the defender. What a grab by Gene Valentine. First and 10 here. South trying to keep the momentum alive, but he's dropped. Cannot evade the pressure from Las Vegas. Jericho Kane, the non uh, contract player, now getting involved. And everybody's getting involved. As if, if it was not him, it was going to be Red Sawyer as he. Almost got his fifth sack of the day. But uh, Portland, again, second and 14. They, they cannot do this. It's, uh, it's been the story of the game. If they want to have a shot at getting a first down, they at least have to get it past the uh, original line of scrimmage here. Second and 14. Here is South. Pumps once, dumps off to Truesman. No, out of bounds. That's... Uh, that's not a great play, but at, at least it was not a sack and not an interception. So they will have a shot to convert in a third and, and long. So, you know, we go back to it again. You know, Vegas is wanting to go press man, 
get some blitz, get in the, in front of the quarterback's face. And what Portland needs to do, as actually this time Vegas goes with the zone, you know, Portland needs to get the ball out of the hands quickly. South going to fire across the middle. Incomplete. Too far for Valentine that time. And that'll bring up fourth and 14. Yeah, he heard some footsteps there on, on the far sideline. Sorry, the near sideline as um, he was double covered and he could have taken a shot. But that's another fourth down and still not quite for fourth down situations here to go for it. Still six minutes and 10 seconds left and all three timeouts. 6-10 to go here. And Portland will kick this one away. Las Vegas does not come after it. Instead, Birkin will try and boot it deep. Jackson on this return will have a little bit of room. He'll get out to the 26-yard line. And so, you know, if I'm Vegas, I'm, I'm running the ball here with Scott, Scott Johnson, at least for the first couple of plays, trying to get that clock ticking under five minutes. Well, with the way these defenses have been playing, you need all the time you can hold on to. Portland looking for a quick three and out as they are down by two possessions. Here is the give to Johnson. Cornerback coming off the edge. Can't wrap him up, but it'll slow him down just enough for Mel Davis to make the tackle. Big stop for, for Mel Davis. And, and it's pretty crazy with the line. It's, you know, we are 13 to nothing in this game. And Vegas was favored by seven points. So they will cover, but still, we're way under the estimated 65.5 points. <laughs> yeah, if you bet the over, I, I, I'm i sorry. I, I don't know what to tell you. 4-3 look out of Portland here. Raman going to throw. Raman takes a deep shot on a corner route. Oh, and he pulled up injured. John Blades pulled up with a hamstring injury and could not complete the route. Man, that's crazy. He had a step on the guy that was probably six points on the board, and he just pulled the hammy as, as we saw it real time. Uh, man, that's so unfortunate for him. That's so unfortunately for, for the Fury as a second player, a second receiver goes down with an injury. Shotgun look here. Four receivers wide for Raman. Working with some backups. Throws the out route here. Caught turning up field. First down. Catch is made. Wow, you can take as many receivers out as you want. LZ Pryor says, I'm still here. Man, and LZ Pryor just getting that catch and getting the yards after the catch for a huge first down. That's going to bring us under five minutes left in the game as uh, Portland desperately needs an interception or a fumble. They need a takeaway. Two receivers, bottom of the formation now. Raman changing the play at the line or just wasting time, whatever works. Raman going to sling down here to this near side, caught and tagged down there is Kirby at the 39. A good important thing is that he got inbounds. Actually, he he was tapped out inbounds. So the clock keeps moving, and that's three yards, which Vegas will take uh, here. And Scott Johnson in the backfield here with a tight set, so I expect a run here to him. 3-4 look out of Portland. Johnson the far back. Plenty of tight ends on the field here for Vegas. Second and seven. They give to Johnson, and he is wrapped up and dropped. Mel Davis was there. And the one thing I was going to say, Ramos, is this Portland defense scored twice last week against Denver, two pick sixes. The offense only scored once last week. So for Portland, you know, you're, you're not necessarily uncomfortable with your defense being on the field. No, no, not necessarily. You know, Portland in the first three games have actually scored only two touchdowns on offense and two on defense. So, you know, this is their, their strong unit, at least right now. And if they can get better, get a big play off their defense, that's going to be huge uh, here in this game. Raman under center gives to Johnson, and he is cut down by Davis. And that'll be the last play of this drive for Las Vegas. They will kick it away. Great job by Davis in the open field again, because if, again, if that's a broken tackle, he's going 20, 30, 40 yards probably. Uh, as uh, Portland will get the ball back, as. It's now or, ne or never here for the Fleet's offense. Fury seem comfortable burning clock and trusting their defense, uh, a defense that has held Portland to zero points so far today. The punter is on to kick this one away. Ludo Blatarski will send it, and Art Vandelay with three minutes to go in the fourth will bring it out across the 30. And that is where Matt South will come back on. It's do-or-die time, Ramos. 
Yeah, most definitely. As uh, Minson, AJ, EJ Minson asks in the chat, uh, if Vegas wins, who gets player of the game? For me, it's no question, Red Sawyer. He's, he's been the motor of, of the whole team all game long, no disrespect to the other guys, but Red Sawyer has been absolutely unstoppable all game long. Empty, bunch down to the bottom of the screen. Two receivers to the top. 3-2 look out of Las Vegas. They'll only bring three. Matt South, dangerous throw. It'll fall incomplete. And that's almost a pick six going all the way as Matt South almost throws another interception. Um, in a second down and 10, I mean, what, what you, you have to go maybe to the back of the playbook, Andy, because the, the first few pitches have not worked this game. It'll fall incomplete, which does also stop the clock, which is fine by Portland's understanding of what's going on. Gun straight here. They will throw. Pressure coming. South dropped again. Unbelievable rush there by the, by the defensive back. Sack made by Bruce Rooster. Here's South going to take a shot deep, and it's incomplete. Merrick Itera there to play it, and I don't know if you can go for it on 4th and 16. I will not, actually. I mean, it, I know it's two possessions. It's, it's 13 points, but you, you have to play the odds game here. And uh, you know, try to get a quick stop and get the ball back. Uh, try another chance because they're actually going to go for it. But, uh, you know, if you miss here, uh, this is scoring position here for Vegas again. Empty set here. Four receivers wide. Nelson Lozano on the top of the formation. South. Takes the seven-step drop. He's going to fire on a corner route, and it's caught! Oh, collected up there by Connor Weston! Unbelievable play by Weston, just mossing the defender as Portland keeps moving. Wow, they hurry up to the line here. Las Vegas just barely getting set here with 2.20 to go. South going to throw. Stands, delivers down the right side of the field. Caught again! Wow, unbelievable! Gene Valentine! And if you're Portland, you hurry to this line quick! Man, what, where was this all game long? Will they get the snap off before the two-minute warning? Yes. Matt South stands. Pressure coming. He evades one. He cannot get away from the second sack made by A.K. Jones. And that is the two-minute warning here in Vegas. Unbelievable. 13-0. Vegas on top. Portland trying to stay in this game. They need a touchdown. Some huge throws from Matt South there. Vegas brought the blitz. He was able to avoid the blitzing defensive back. Could not avoid Jones. Yeah, he, he just could not avoid the first guy, but you have to get rid of it. I mean, just throw it out of bounds, do something. You, again, second and 19. This, this is very difficult to do. South, five-step drop, pressure coming, unloads to Truesman. Truesman up the sideline with room. Truesman, nice play there. He gets all of what they lost back and some, getting up to the Vegas 24-yard line and out of bounds, Ramos. Incredible play. Yeah, yeah that, that's that's a key thing. He got out of bounds. He stopped the clock as Matt South almost got sacked again, but a lot of room here for, for Truesman. And again, very good awareness. We've seen many running backs in the SFL run out of bounds because of the inertia, they just they just run out of room. But uh, good agility by Truesman, uh, turning up the field and getting some good yardage. Really manageable third and six here. Definitely two down territory here. Whether you take a sack or not, you could also try and kick the field goal if you really wanted to. Two in the backfield, spread here for South. Pressure coming. Las Vegas brings four. South unloads underneath. That is caught by Weston. He'll go down. Oh, at the 20, and Portland calls timeout. Yeah, I, I don't agree with that timeout. I will just hurry to to the line and get another play. I understand it to a degree because you wanna you wanna call the right play because it's obviously the biggest play of the game so far here, a fourth and one. But uh, being being with only two timeouts means that you must score a touchdown and then kick the onside kick. Fourth and a yard. They're gonna go empty here. Matt South under center. Four receivers wide. Pressure coming from Vegas. South airs it out down the field. Picked off in the end zone. And Vegas should end it there. Nikki Colantrelli takes it away in the end zone. And the Fury get the ball back. Yeah, what a play by Colantrelli on that one. Just middle of the field. Gets in front of the receiver. And that's textbook safety coverage. Just read. He was reading the quarterback's eyes. 
turned into the you know wide receiver, saw he was doing the post route, got in front of him, interception. And it is so weird to see a shot out here in the SFL, Andy, uh, and, and we might see one here 13 nothing. Still a minute 41 to go. Portland, though, down to two timeouts. Here's the handoff to Johnson. Mel Davis buries Johnson, and there is the first time or the second timeout from Portland, I should say. Yeah, so Portland, if they can get a stop here in second and third down, they will get the ball back with about probably 15 to 20 seconds uh, left in, in the game. Uh, actually, maybe a little bit more because they still have one timeout, so probably about a minute left. Um, so, you know, we, we'll see. We've seen crazier things before in the SFL. 4-3 here for Portland. Johnson, the lone back. This looks like the formation that Las Vegas likes to run out of. Give here. Davis tackles him. Another loss of a yard, and that is the final timeout for Portland. And, Ramos, it really just goes to show you that burning that timeout earlier in the game uh, really set them up for a bad spot here. Yeah, I agree, because if you can call a timeout here with a third and 11 after this play, uh, you still have about 90 seconds for your offense to to try to pull something out. So instead, it's uh, third and 11. Vegas has to run this one to milk the clock as much as possible. Man here, no, Raman's gonna throw, pressure coming. Raman gonna run it, right up the gut. Oh, he doesn't get there. Fourth and one, Raman slid early. He's a little upset about the hit, but it is going to be a stop for Portland. Wow, and uh, Thomas Raman, that's a great read. I mean, it's, it's man coverage, uh, so that opens up the space for the quarterback to run. And he was just a shy, uh, you know, yard shy of the first down marker as Vegas will punt. But again, a good read because uh, the clock keeps moving and you do not put the ball into harm's way. Blatarski will kick this one away. Art Vandele deep to return. Blatarski will let as much time roll off this clock as he can. Now down to two and finally takes the snap. Kick on the way to Vandalay, and he will call for a fair catch, and we will step aside Cameron Irvine with a game break from the studio for us. Well, after this game is over, Andy, if you want to see a team having themselves a night, go check out Lone Star and Houston on YouTube. Houston, 190 yards for Murray, 239 from Johnson, and the Hyenas lead 41-9 over Lone Star. Extra point block, 10 minutes to go over Plenty of offense over there to make up for a lack of it over here. 13 to nothing, the score so far. Matt South going to throw underneath, caught inbounds, and that will keep the clock rolling. Valentine with a catch. Yeah, and Venus is just playing, uh, you know, sideline. It's playing deep. There's nothing deep here. Here is South. Check down to Truesman there, and he will get dropped for a loss. Yeah, that's not going to work. Even if it's deep coverage, you have to chuck it deep. There, there's nothing to Shotgun look again here on third and 10. South airs it out deep down the middle. Caught. Nice catch there down to the 40, but they got to hurry. They might get one more playoff. Weston with the grab. Yeah, they, they're going to spike it here, and they're going to get a, a last play. So uh, not enough time to pull up the comeback either way, but trying to, to break the zero with uh, uh, Hail Mary coming up, I will say. Portland will move to 0-3 with the loss here tonight. They head to Carolina in Week 4. Las Vegas will move to 2-1. They go to Sioux Falls to take on the Sparrows next week. Both teams hitting the road and both teams with some difficult matchups. Hail Mary formation here for South. Extra pressure coming. South protected well for now. Gets the throw off. Deep to the back of the end zone. Tipped up. And incomplete, and that'll do it. A shutout for the Las Vegas Fury, 13 to nothing over the fleet. Ramos, it was a defensive battle from the start. A tough game the whole way through. Both defenses played very well, and the one touchdown from uh, Tom Rahman and the kick from Otis Boudreau is good enough to finish this one off. Yeah, and uh, you know, if you look at the stats, Portland, I mean, not too bad in the passing game. But uh, most of those yards came away in the last couple of drives when um, Matt Saud was able to connect deep in a couple of plays. So, you know, they, they need to get back to the lab and, and try to figure out this offense. On defense, though, I mean, they look incredible. They, they really do. And, and, you know, the past couple of weeks, they look very good. If they can keep that momentum on defense and just find a little bit more offense, I think this is a team to look out for. Uh, still a lot of season left. 0-3 does not mean season is over, of course. Um, so they still still have a shot, and um, 
you know, as, as long as you can get in that playbook and make make some changes, make some fixes, uh, you, know, you know, Portland could be a team to to really watch out for in the second half of the year. We want to thank David and KT Harrell for running stats for us tonight. Incredibly helpful. Mel Davis and Slynn Shady all over the field on tackles. Tank Hut and Red Sawyer, both big in terms of sacks tonight. And there are the quarterback numbers. Raman with the one touchdown. Matt South with more yards by the end of the game, but also more interceptions. Nikki Colantrelli, Max Jackson, and Merrick Itera all had picks. Boudreaux, two of three on field goals. And Ramos, a defensive battle, turns the way of the Fury. And they'll have a tough one next week against Sioux Falls. Yeah, very tough. Uh, Sioux Falls is quite possibly the best team in the SFL, or, or he is, they, they're right up there as the best team in the SFL, as Red Sawyer is going to be a player of the game. Wow, the defensive end gets the nod, four sacks, five tackles for Sawyer, well earned, the veteran, his fifth season in the league. For everyone here at the SFL in week three, we want to thank you for tuning in. For Ramos Lynn, I'm Andy Hamilton, pr producer and commissioner Cameron Irvine behind the ones and twos. Thank you and have a good night. Have a good night.